On the morning of September 20th, 2017, Hurricane Maria made landfall in the little town of Yabucoa, Puerto Rico at 6.15 a.m. Atlantic Standard Time. On the morning of September 19th, just one day before the sixth anniversary of that tragic event, my wife and I visited Yabucoa as part of our five musty places series. You can hardly tell the nightmare that unfolded in this coastal town on the southeastern corner of Puerto Rico. The vegetation has mostly recovered and the destruction isn't hardly as evident. But this was ground zero. This is where it all happened. And this is where many of the wounds are still open. This video is going to be different. I'm going to tell you about all the places that look more or less normal. I'm also going to tell you about some that could easily improve with a little thought and a little work. And finally, I might mention some that still show the ugly effects of Hurricane Maria. All this and more in our next episode. Getting to Yabucoa from the San Juan Metroplex is relatively easy. Just take Toll Road 52 going south, get off on State Road number 1 going south, take State Road 30 going east, then take a small segment of State Road 3 going south, turn left on State Road 906, right on State Road 53, and get off on State Road 901, which will take you straight to the center of town. Or better yet, just follow the coordinates on screen and they'll take you straight to the main square. You can hardly tell how horrendous it must have been the day that Hurricane Maria hit this town. Everything is back up and running, all the trees are green, and people go about business as usual. But the signs are there if you know where to look. Let's take the church, for example. Parroquia Santos Ángeles Custodios, inaugurated in 1968. We were unable to see the inside because it was closed, but our research shows that the interior is lovely. There's stained glass everywhere, and the temple accommodates up to 850 faithful. But here's what I had never seen. I had never seen a church with industrial roll-up doors. You know, the kind that you see at warehouses. Now, I could be wrong, but the fact that it has that kind of doors suggests that Hurricane Maria probably busted whatever was there before. Also, as beautiful as this church might be on the inside, on the outside, it looks more like a bunker. And again, I wouldn't blame them, since many of Puerto Rico's meanest hurricanes, like San Felipe, San Siriaco, San Ciprián, Santa Clara, Georges, and most recently Maria, have all plowed through this town. As far as town squares go, Yabucoa has little to write home about. The square is the little space in front of the church, which is actually clean and has adequate tree cover, but it's tiny. As we left town, we headed for the ruins of Hacienda Lucia. During the 19th century, Yabucoa was a sugarcane powerhouse, and Hacienda Lucia was one of its six sugarcane plantations. There's a small government-run exhibit where you can see one of its original sugarcane mills. But guess what? The place was closed. What we found was a sign that says that they only receive visitors by appointment. <laughs> well, guess what? That might work for a local, 
but not for someone traveling from abroad who's bound to just stop by unannounced. Besides, I tried the phone number on the sign and all I got was a black box with a dead-end extension that no one answers. Next on our list was Central Roig, another of the large 19th century sugarcane plantations. That one is abandoned. We simply walked around for a while and eventually left. So far, <laughs> our batting average was rather disappointing. We headed for Playa Lucia, a beach area that was supposed to be quite lovely. Well, it turned out to be one of those beaches that I call eye candy. The beach itself is lovely, if only because God made it that way. But whatever was there in the past, in the way of beach facilities, is all gone. It looks like a place suitable for bathing, but the fact was that there wasn't a single soul in the water. So let's just say that it warrants further investigation. You can also see the effects of erosion due to changing sea levels and the great amount of sargasso weed that the island has received this year. After leaving Playa Lucia, there were several places south that we wanted to visit, including Piedra La Guaretas, which is a huge boulder on the coast that's symmetrically split in half, Playa El Negro, and El Cocal, both of which are supposed to be lovely beaches. But there was a problem. My SUV had a fuel injection problem, and all those places had one thing in common. They were all on the coast, and you had to drive down steep hills to get to them from the main road. And, of course, if you have to go down a steep hill to get there, you'd have to go up a steep hill to get back out. And I don't think my vehicle was up for that. And just so you know, this wasn't something that I was told. We actually drove all the way there and decided to turn back. I'll include all the coordinates to those places in my accompanying blog post, but make sure your vehicle can take the climb before attempting to go there. After driving back north, we visited the Jabucoa Harbor Boulevard. This is an area where there's another eye candy beach, a fishing area, and a boardwalk. It's a lovely place that offers a great view of the neighboring island municipality of Vieques. People go there to fish and relax next to the ocean, but it's not for swimming. In fact, we actually had lunch under the palm trees before leaving for Guayanes Beach. Guayanes Beach is a government-run facility, but it's not a balneario. It's actually quite nice and absolutely free. It has a sandy bottom, and the surf is rather mild. At least, it was mild the day I went there. You can still see the aftermath of Hurricane Maria in some of the surrounding structures, though. In fact, we spoke with several locals, and they told us that they had shoveled sand for months just to clean up the place after the storm. After leaving Guayanes Beach, We had every intention of visiting two additional beaches, Playa Icacos and Playa Secreta. However, we ran into one of Puerto Rico's sad realities. Puerto Rican law specifies that beaches on the island belong to the people. They're considered public domain. But in many places, private concerns have purchased beachside property and simply fenced out the locals. And this is exactly the case with these two beaches. They're inside a gated community called Palmas del Mar. And as hard as I tried, there was no way to get to them. So after making some amazing images of the island of Vieques over the Palmas del Mar skyline, we decided to go home. To get to San Juan from the Palmas del Mar area, Just take State Road 53 until you reach the intersection with State Road 30. Follow State Road 30 west to the exit towards Toll Road 52 going north, and follow 52 until you reach the Minillas Tunnel. 
And talking about San Juan, if you're planning to visit the old city, save yourself the hassle of traditional city tours. They're expensive and you'll be herded along with people that won't necessarily share your interests. Instead, order the Old San Juan Walking Tour. It's packed with useful information about all the main attractions, as well as every GPS coordinate and two hours of exclusive online video. That way, you'll be able to visit before you visit and hit the ground running when you arrive in the old city. See you next time.